All right, so take a moment just to settle in. Quiet the breath, bring it down low in the body. I'm gonna actually have us do six rounds of Brahmari, and then we'll go into the chant. Um, and just to be clear, it's because I need it, but it might help you too. Anamaya, Pranamaya, Manomaya, Vijnanamaya, Anandamaya, Me, Shudhyanta, Jodhiraham, Virajadipapma, Bhuya, Sago Swaha Anamaya Pranamaya Manamaya Vijnanamaya Anandamaya Me Shudhyanta Jyotiraham Virajadi pap ma puya Anamaya pranamaya manamaya vijnana maya ananda maya me shudyanta. Jyotiraham virajadipapma puyasago svaha svaha hari
So let's, um, let's begin standing. And I've uh, redone my setup. And hopefully this will work and that you can see all of me. Does that work? You might want to set your camera up so I can, so you aren't headless. It's a little less disconcerting when you're not headless, you know what I mean? All right, so, you know, it's been a morning. It's been a little stressful, at least here at EYT. So, you know what wild animals do when they uh, avert the lion and survive once they get to the savanna and free and clear, they shake. Wise ones that they are, they shake it out. They shake it out and they shake it off. So let's shake, 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 and shake, you can shake low, and you can shake high, and over to the right, and over to the left, and you can shake around, and down, and down, and down, and your feet aren't super glued to the floor, so. Hey, Claudia. Bring on the music. We're just shaking. Come and join us. I'm going to for a minute. Okay. Can you mute yourself, though, please? I will. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Although a little music for the shaking is not a bad idea. All right. Keep going. Shake, 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 shake. Um, for those of you who have not attended my regular classes, um, we shake. We bounce, we undulate, we do a lot of things like that because it's actually a very, very healthy thing to do. And uh, it's great for stress. It's great for the fascia. It's a little fun. We all need a little fun these days. So adding a little shake to your life is a very, very, very good thing. So I'm going to invite you to go from the shake to just a bounce. So here just finding a little bit of that buoyancy and just lightly, lightly bouncing, almost as if you were on a little trampoline. Hi, Jennifer Kelly. Thank you for joining us. My apologies for the mix up, but here we are. Glad you could join in. Good morning. Good morning, good morning. And if you could mute yourself, that would be lovely. We're just uh, shaking it all off. Oh yeah, mute. Uh-huh, thank you. Great. Claudia, we can't see your lovely face, so if you could turn your uh, video on, that would be great. So I'm gonna have you find yourselves kind of shaking your way into Uttanasana, and you can still keep bouncing lightly one side, then the other, and just loosening up the spine, the shoulders, add a little undulation, a little, Un, non-linear, undefined movement that just helps to release, relax, and let go. And then very gradually begin, not all of a sudden, but just very gradually begin to slow the bounce until you find yourself in stillness and just allow yourself to experience the vibrational quality that remains after the shake and the bounce. And then go ahead and bring yourself into Downward Dog. And just again, as a way of warming up and releasing tension in the body, anywhere you might feel it, using a movement, not a static dog pose. Um, I'm sure there's a use for static dog pose, but I um, am struggling to find it. Um, I find that moving within that, this particular posture offers so much access to areas of the body that are not 
accessible in other postures that uh, I like to utilize it that way. And then back to Uttanasana, and from there, gently bringing yourselves up to Tadasana. And just pause there and feel. Let the breath slow. Bring it down into that gentle abdominal diaphragmatic breath. And then let's have you take the legs wide. Um, again, many of you might, or some of you might want to have a block handy to place between the legs. We're gonna do, um, uh, you might wanna just watch, some of you might not know this adaptation of the standing twist. It's like a twist in prasarita. So the feet are wide and parallel. Um, you're gonna go into your forward fold, bring your hand towards the center to the center line of the body, enough that you can maintain good extension in your spine. So you don't wanna be rounded and flexed this way, okay? And then with the left hand on the block, you're gonna inhale and extend the right arm forward and exhale and gently pull back and work with a little bit of that thoracic twist. And as we've been working the last few days, turning the head alternately, finding a, a range that is comfortable for your neck, or just choosing to look down if that's a better choice for your neck, but working with the rotation of the upper body, okay? <clears throat> so preparing yourself for prasarita, raising the arms on the inhale, exhale, twisting to your right to begin with, right? So I'll mirror, twisting to the right, and then you're gonna reach the, the uh, right arm out alongside the ear as you pull back and create that lap bar pull action, you're actually rotating your thoracic spine. And then reaching forward and pulling back again, alternating the turn of the head. And make this movement kind of leisurely, explore it. There's no big rush, feel what's happening through the whole right side of the body as you move in and out of the rotation. If you feel like you wanna take the uh, left hand a little farther over to the right to get a little deeper rotation, you can, but it's not necessary. Keep checking in with the extension of the spine, making sure that you're not going into flexion. Good, and then when you complete that next exhalation breath, Go ahead and fold forward and just release into the forward fold and do some hip circles, releasing and relaxing uh, the musculature around the pelvis. And then inhale and bring yourself all the way up. Pause there for a moment. Settle the breath. Observe and notice how working with the twist on the one side has affected you. And then shifting as you're ready to the other side, raising the arms on the inhale. Exhale, twisting to your left. And as you're ready, working with the movement of the arm, thinking of your arm as starting at the base of your rib cage, not in the shoulder socket, but at the base of the rib cage, so that the movement is really a full torso movement as you reach forward and back. You guys can do it. I'm just like, sometimes it's hard for me to explain and do at the same time. So you're inhaling as you're reaching forward, exhaling as you draw back, work with the upper back. I think of this kind of action with a twist as if you're doing a back bend in your upper back. 
So when you are pulling back, really emphasize almost like a cobra extension in the upper back. Yeah. Good. And then again, after this next pull back, fold forward and release into the forward bend. Do a little hip movement to open and relax and stretch those muscles out. And then <clears throat> as you're ready, bending the knees softly and reaching out, bringing yourselves all the way back up and bringing the feet back into Tadasana alignment. And just pause for a moment and feel. So let's do a little, uh, a little vinyasa, a little flow sequence, um, starting off going to the right. And again, you can use your block, have it handy uh, as needed for you or chair. So with your inhalation breath, raise the arms up. With your exhalation breath, bend the front knee and come into Vera 2, really ground through the back heel and pause there, breathe in, breathe out and bring your right hand to the inside of the right thigh. Inhale and extend overhead, stretching deeply into the side. Exhale, pull back in Parshvakanasana, pull back and stretch into the neck. Inhale, extend the arm forward. Exhale and bring your left hand to your hip. Inhale, reach out, scoop up with the right arm and extend back into reverse warrior. And then exhale and release and come back to stand and we'll start again. Okay, so that's the sequence. Inhale. And exhale, coming into Virabhadrasana two. Pause there and take a breath. Set your core. And then exhale, bring the right hand to the thigh. Inhale, lengthen through the left side of the body. Exhale, bend the elbow, rotate, stretch back. Little back bend extension in the upper body. Inhale, extend the arm out. With your exhale, bring the hand to the hip, inhale, scoop out, reach up, reach back, lengthen through the right, and then exhale, extend the front leg and pause. Settle the breath. I'm gonna do one more time on this side. Inhale, and exhale, pause, Stabilize with your exhalation breath. Inhale and exhale, coming over. Inhale, the left arm comes across. Find a new or different place on the sideline to work as you are in Parjvakanasana. Inhale and then exhale, bring the arm down, engage the core first, stabilize the pelvis, strong press down through the legs, and then lift and reach back in reverse warrior. And exhale and release. And come and bring the feet parallel, pause there, hands on hips, soft knees, a little undulation in the pelvis. That's it. Be sure that the undulation includes the butt swirling back, right? It's that it's backwards movement of the pelvis as opposed to a tuck that actually helps to support healthy glute action. Good. All right. And then setting yourself up to come to the other side.
and inhale, raising the arms. And exhale, coming down into the earth two and pause. Take a breath there. Set the shoulders down, set the core in. With your exhale, fold down to the left. With your inhale, lengthen out through the right. Explore the right side of the body. Explore the neck and shoulder girdle with movement, adapting as appropriate, right? And then exhale, bring the right hand to the hip. Inhale, reach up. Lengthen back into the left and then release and pause, settle the breath. In and exhale out, pause here, relax the shoulders, hug inward, lower rib cage coming in too. And exhale as you lean to the left. Inhale as you extend and expand through the right. Exhale, pull back. And inhale, extend outward. Release the arm down on the exhale. Reach forward and up in a scooping action on the inhale and exhale and pause. Notice how it feels to take it slow, to do a little flow, but then to also give yourself time to reset in between. Just notice. Okay. Again, in and exhale out. Pause, take a breath. Lean left as you exhale. Reach out through the right, remember, lengthening through the ribs and the waist. And find your adaptation as you pull back and release forward. And then reaching the arm all the way to big sweep back down. And then inhale, scooping up and leaning back to the right. And exhale and release and turn the feet back to center. And then bring your feet to narrow width, hip width apart, and coming into Uttanasana. Just allowing your body to release into the forward fold, feeling the draw of gravity Staying grounded through the heels, scooping inward through the belly to give that nice abdominal support and allow for a deeper quality of flexion in the front of the hips. Neck, shoulders draped, head released, neck relaxed. And using good support, soft knees to come up, shoulders back, core engaged, lifting, and exhale, palms together in Anjali Mudra. And let's just have you shift your weight to your right foot and come into balance. Tree pose, Vrikshasana. You can use a mudra if you like. Hands in whatever position works for you. Remembering balance and equilibrium. And practicing. Even when things feel wobbly. And then shifting. As you're ready.
Where does the mind go even if the body loses its balance? Can the mind stay steady, eyes stay steady, breath stay light and low? And again, returning to Tadasana and pause, the eyes closed, feel into the breath. A little low pitched Brahmari, three rounds. Mm. And then bringing yourselves down onto the side of your body. And you might want to have a blanket so that you can have a little cushion under your hip. Okay. So in this position, you want to have your forearm on the floor, make a nice fist with your hand so that your arm feels like it's doing something. You're not just hanging out there, but you're actually pressing down through the arm. And as you press down through the arm, you're lifting the side of your torso away from the floor. The alignment for this is that the elbow, the hip, and the knees are in a straight line. So the feet are behind you, not flexed forward, right? Okay, good. All right, so I mentioned, I think in yesterday's practice, the importance of the sidelines and importance of them as stabilizers. So we're gonna do some side work today in strengthening, okay? So, Start with just lifting the hips away from the floor as you press down and hold, 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 and then barely touch down, like just a tiny touch, and then back up again. And hold, 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 and then again, slow release, barely touch and lift. So we're not really resting, we're just pretending to rest. And then down, it's a little teaser, and then lift again. And down and then lift and hold, hold, hold. Unless you want to do another 10 or 15 of these, what do you think? And then up, hold, hold, hold. And then go ahead and come down and just take a moment. I want to, I want to get a check in to see how, how familiar are you with the strengthening of the sides? I know some of you have been working with me and so are do it, have done some of this. Um, it tends to get forgotten about in yoga classes, I'm sorry to say, um, but I'd like to resurrect side strengthening, side plank in, in these kinds of formats for the health and well being of our bodies. All right, so let's have you, um, we'll go, I'll keep building progressively, and you can opt to back off at any point that you feel like that's the place that you want to go right? That's where you are today. All right. So extending your top leg out so that it's in line with the, the rest of you, right? And then again, lift. And this time, can you lift the leg and drop the hip and drop the leg and lift the hip? So it's a little bit like a seesaw. Hip goes up and the foot comes down. Hip goes down and the foot comes up. How's that? I'm not sure, Gail, you could maybe use your sofa so that there's not as much weight on your arm. Okay, and then rest down. How is that? 
You guys feeling some work? Your arm, the sides, yep. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of work in the arms. Is Jennifer, is that what you're telling me? Okay, all right. We'll just do one more little variation, see how you guys do with it, okay? All right, so again, you can always step it back if that's better for you. All right, so lifting up, lift the top leg, extend the top arm, and now you're gonna reach both ends towards the floor in a little crescent, lifting that lower hip and the waist away from the floor. And then you're gonna do elbow to knee. So reach out, tip down, curl in. Reach out and then curl in. Reach out, curl in, two more. Inhale, exhale, inhale, and exhale. Good, and then just come and happily rest on your side. Let your breath calm and settle. And then let's have you turn yourself around to your other side. And uh, these are, you know, the asymmetrical postures are very revealing for imbalances in our body, particularly when we do strengthening movements, um, which we often don't isolate, do isolated strengthening movements in our yoga asana practice. Um, but they really help us to understand compensation patterns. So don't be surprised if you find that one side is significantly weaker than the other. It happens. <clears throat> I'm reminded because guess which side I'm on now. All right. Elbow, hip, and knees are in a straight line, feet behind you. And we'll start with just a little lift. Hold, hold, hold. And then barely touch down and then lift again. So it's a slow descent down and then lift. Slow release down and then lift. Check in with the positioning of your neck. So if your head's forward, it changes things significantly. Pull your chin in and feel yourself basically in mountain pose from the crown of the head through the whole spine down through the pelvis. One more time down and then lift and hold, 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 and then go ahead and relax. So how was that on this side? Of course, you're, you're, if you, you know, some of you, I know this is a lot of weight bearing on the arms, nothing wrong with getting a little stronger in the upper body either. And these are good, but you know, if you need to do a little release in between, that's fine. Okay. Extend your top leg out. And then you're going to lift up, right? And this is when the leg goes up, the hip comes down. And when the hip goes up, the leg goes down. So it's a little seesaw back and forth, a little drawbridge action. Down and up and down and up. Working with the sides, really terrific for stabilization of the pelvis, sacrum, lower back. Not to mention very good for the hip joint as well. And one more down and up, and then give it a little rest. If you need to stretch, release your arm, go ahead and do so. You know, are you finding something, an adaptation for you with your knee? Yeah, good. All right, round three, setting yourself up. And the arm comes up, you're in a little bit of a crescent, really lift up. So you're shortening the underside, lengthening the top side, and then you're gonna do a little side crunch in, knee to elbow, and then extend again, and then knee to elbow. Really lift your torso in the opposite direction against gravity. Yeah, good, two more.
All righty. And extend the underside arm so you get a little bit of length back in that side. And And from here, let's have you come onto your back. We'll start with just Apanasana, bringing the knees in on the exhale, gently stretching into the lower back. And then inhale and extend the knees back, arms length away from you. Exhale, flexing in. And inhale, extending out. Then we can join Janelle. If you have a block, I suggest you place the block between your calves. Take your arms out to the side. Nice engagement of the core, gentle contraction of the abdominals as you pull in and then hold for five to seven seconds. And then inhale, keep the feet flexed, push back to just right angles. Please don't go beyond that. And then flex in again. That's it, hold, hold, hold. Inhale, pushing back, evenly squeezing into the calves, into the block with the calves. So you're working the inside muscles of the leg, which are connected to the pelvic floor and the deep core abdominal muscles, all the way up through the diaphragm and actually all the way up through the front of the throat, the deep neck core. So keeping the chin in, Again, exhale, flex in and hold, 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 hold. And then inhale back. And one more time. Flex in with your exhale, hold, hold, hold. And back. And then bringing your feet to the floor. Pause there. And just let the breath settle. Notice if your neck and shoulders, your jaw got tight while you were doing that core work and do a little undulation. So circling your shoulder blades, scapular swirls to free and loosen up the upper back, neck, shoulders, a little paint the floor with the back of the head, which is a non-linear, as all undulations are, non-linear movement of kind of mushing the back of your head in all swirls and curly cues on the floor and sliding it around, lifting chin, dropping chin, and just releasing tension in through the neck, right? And then you can also doodle on the ceiling with your nose, which is another nice neck undulation variation on the paint the floor theme. And just notice how different it feels to move from the nose rather than move from the back of the head. Different reference point, different experience. Okay, let's have you remove the block. And uh, we're gonna do a little bit of uh, bridge pose. So inhaling, pressing down through the soles of the feet, bringing the, both arms up overhead and extending the arms overhead. As you exhale, you're gonna press the palms up towards the ceiling so that you protract the scapula, move them apart from one another and draw the belly in and curl the spine all the way down. Okay, so we'll do that again. I know first time around, it can be a little confusing. Arms go fully up overhead as you lift the pelvis. As you exhale, the spine curls all the way down. The arms only go halfway. Press actively like you're trying to do a handstand on the ceiling. Move the scapula apart and curl down. Okay, a little release for that upper back work. Inhale, extend the arms, 
hips lift, exhale, curl down all the way, arms stretch upwards, expanding the shoulder blades away from the spine and back down. Nice. And then just take a moment to feel the space around the mid and upper back. You're bringing the right knee into your chest and the hands behind the back of the knee and extend up through the heel and stretching into the ankle, circling it and a little internal and external rotation, internal and external rotation. Again, a little more release deep inside the hip socket so that as you're going in and out, the pelvis stays grounded. Good. Keeping the right leg extended, let's have you do this. So we'll start a little gentler and we can move into that. Flex the right knee into your chest, but take your arms down by your side. We're gonna do a variation of one-legged bridge. Right? So to start with, you're going to be standing very firmly into your left leg, lifting your hips, keep your right knee flexed, and just go up and down three times. Keep the right leg static, and you're moving your spine, asking your left glute, hamstring, quad to do all the work. Up and down. Okay? Nice getting this? Good. All right. Now, those of you who would like to go a little bit stronger, when you, you can work with your leg extended when the spine is down, keep the right leg extended when you bridge up, but lower it like a drawbridge so that it's parallel to the floor. And then drawbridge it back up as you curl the spine back down. So you're inhaling up into bridge, the right leg lowers, exhale, curl down and lift the leg back up. Again, down. And of course, any variation on that theme, like if it's better for you to flex the knee in as you curl down, work that way, right? Two more. Nice and slow. Good, solid support through the base. Good. And then flex the right knee into the chest, bring the right foot down to the floor, pause and feel. Check in with the upper body. Did things get tense upstairs while you were working strongly downstairs? Check it out. All right. Now, right leg bears the weight. Left knee comes into the chest. We're gonna just do a little tester to see Again, this is another one of those asymmetrical strength postures so that you may find there's a significant difference between the two sides. So keeping the knee into the chest to begin with and just see how it feels to do that little bit of a bridge pulse through your right leg. Pressing down, pressing down through the heel to lift the hips up and slow controlled core engagement as you curl back down. Okay, so depending on how you experience that, maybe you just want to do more of that. Those of you who want to work more with the leg extended, you can do extension flexion in or extension and then draw bridge down as you bridge up. And then draw bridge up as you curl down. So finding your best adaptation that you can work with that's challenging and yet you don't find yourself compensating with a lot of tension in the neck or jaw or a lot of wobble. So the idea is to challenge our bodies, our minds, right? To grow stronger through our practices, working compassionately and with that eye to ahimsa so that we are not harming ourselves. We're being satya, honest, truthful with where we are today with our practice. Good, and then folding the knee to the chest, 
bringing the left foot down to the floor beside you, I mean, beside the right, and pause and feel. Settle the breath. And then turning the soles of the feet to face one another and turning the legs out. Those of you with super loose hips, right? Only open three quarters of the way. So um, even those uh, who are tighter in the hips, I'm just gonna suggest that you keep yourself where you have to work the muscles around the hip joint so you're never just hanging into it. We're gonna work dynamically, not statically with this. So slow exhalation as you draw the thighs together so that the knees touch in the middle and the core muscles are zipped in. There's a little inward scoop of the abdominals, which by the way is different than an active tucking of the pelvis, right? So there will be a little bit of a forward rotation of the pelvis as you open and a little backwards rotation of the pelvis as you close. That's natural. But the emphasis isn't on tucking and untucking the pelvis. It's on the engagement of the core muscles hugging viscerally inward with the exhale and releasing outward with the inhale and going as slow as you possibly can. And then those of you who would like to do the hovering butterfly, lifting the buttocks slightly off the floor, uh, just a few inches like your hand distance, like if you could just put your hand underneath and hold your buttocks off your hand, don't let them touch down, and then do the slow butterfly action in and out. Notice if there's wobble side to side, can you even that out? So right side, left side, glutes and abductors, abductors are working equally and evenly. And if you'd like to go a little bit more challenging, you can cross your arms softly over your chest so that you're not stabilizing using your hands and just use your core to keep the wobble from happening. Nice slow inner core and outer core working here. Good. And then go ahead and slowly release the buttocks down. Once again, bring the knees into the chest and do some soft uh, concentric circles, knees apart and together. both directions. And then placing your left foot on the floor, extending your right knee. And we're gonna work with hip circles. You may want to observe this around or two. Uh, pelvis stays stable on square, standing leg very, very firmly planted and then you're creating a circular action externally rotating as you take the leg out, a little internal rotation as you bring the leg in and back to center. We're gonna go circling four or five times in each direction, okay? Those of you who want to go a little bit stronger for the abdominals, taking the left leg off the floor and the knee into the chest without holding or withholding lightly, will challenge the abdominals a little bit more. So you can work foot down, or foot up, keeping the pelvis square. I like to keep my hands on my hips just to keep me honest. It's so easy to cheat, right? And just really working in the hip and noticing as you circle around. Janelle, with love for you, this is very good for your knees to get all the musculature around the hip joint, right? Part of your knee rehab, hip circles. Jennifer Kelly. Be careful for your hip, yes? You're taking good care of yourself? Good. All right. And then back to center, relax the right foot to the floor. And then bringing your left knee in, extend the left leg, stabilize. Do a few with the foot down and just test the water. See how stable you feel on this side, how easily this hip moves. Might be a whole other story over here for some of you, right? So being respectful of your structural condition and moving within the range that is possible and healthy for you today. 
taking the foot off if you want to work a little more with a little more strength at the core. Notice if your jaw is clenching, can you keep it nice and loose as you do your circles? Good, and then both feet resting to the floor. Take a moment to pause there and feel. And then go ahead and bring yourselves, um, do a little counter pose with some apanasana. And then bringing yourselves gently into Shavasana. So notice how your body feels as you come to rest in Shavasana. Use the contact points of your body touching down to the floor beneath you as a means of grounding you. Quieting the flow of prana through you, settling into yourself.
And gently now begin to bring yourselves out of Shavasana. Coming to sit for meditation. Before we move into meditation, let's do five minutes of reduced subtle breathing. So choices for that um, in terms of uh, hand position, you can either have your hands on lower and upper abdominals or one on the heart, one on the abdominals to cue you to keep the upper body relaxed and to keep that slow, gentle abdominal uh, pump going, massaging through the lower body. Or if you like the cupped hands position that we played with yesterday, and you would like to work that way, you're welcome to do that. So five minutes, settling into the slow, low breath. The idea is to make the breath as light and imperceptible as you can, making it just like a soft whisper. So pranayama, the containment of prana, is the means, primary means the yogis use to quiet and settle the mind to prepare the mind for meditation. So setting that intention after that stronger physical practice to calm, settle, ground, and move your attention into single pointed focus, internalized, and with every breath growing more still, more quiet. Noticing that there is an intensity to the process. It's actually much easier to breathe bigger and to breathe smaller. It takes more control, more effort, and certainly more attentiveness of mind. and then relaxing the hands and preparing for the tongue glen meditation. 
So resting your awareness on the heart, resting your awareness on the light within. And then tapping into whatever is arising within you that is challenging today. Whatever is bringing up some fear or trepidation, some tension, some overwhelm, be specific about that piece, choosing that which is particularly strong, an emotional pull for you at the moment. And let yourself feel it, really embracing it as you breathe in, taking it in closer, And as you breathe out, offering up some comfort, some light, a moment of peace, a moment of joy, a moment of beauty that you've experienced, remembering that is here as well. And take a bit of time riding the tide of the taking in of the difficulty and offering up the love, that which soothes. And then extending that same prayerful act to the known and unknown people in your community, beyond your community, who are also experiencing a very similar, if not the same kind of fear of overwhelm, uncertainty, and offer them what you offer yourself. An act of kindness, an act of remembering that we are more connected than separate. This is really a practice of remembering that fear feels like fear to everybody, overwhelm, is a shared experience, anger, frustration, anxiety, as is love, and light and joy and comfort. We know these, they're universal experiences. And through Tung Glen, we share that experience that we hold as our own, we remember that we are not alone in the experience of either the challenge, the pain, the fear, or the love, and the light, the hope, the sweet.
and then returning to the light of the heart, the purity of the light of the divine within. Just rest your attention, your breath, your awareness, feeling your wholeness, the allness of it all. The humanity and the divinity within you, within all of us. And we'll close with the chant for peace. Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. Namaste.